Perry in Heilbronn, Germany. He writes to me and he says, I am looking forward to meeting the team of PS Audio and Octave Records and your DSD downloads are stunning. Why, thank you, sir. And we are doing tours again. So if you wanna come, you can, Monday through Friday from like nine to five, just show up. <laughs> we have our red telephone. <laughs> I love that thing. I thought it, Jim wanted me, our president, wanted me to get a phone that someone could just pick up. It has no dial on it. Just pick up and then it, the guys in the sales area hey, somebody's out there and they give you a tour, right? And I, I thought, oh, one of those red phones like the president picks up and talks to Russia, you know? So we found one of those. And so you can pick the phone up or you can be legit and, and set up an appointment and then you'll get an even, I don't know if you get a different tour, probably get the same tour. Anyway, uh, that's happening again. Um, anyway, he says, I'm listening to DSD files, good, using an Arlick Ares G2 and a Rune Nucleus together with a T plus A, what a great name, T plus A, oh, most males will get that, DAC 200 and a T plus A, PA 3100 HV. Sounds like a disease. <coughs> Sorry, I am currently using the USB port to connect the streaming device with the DAC. Now, do you think there's another connection between these devices that would be better? Thanks for your answer. Um, I think in your case, probably not. So the only other option that you have, and I have to say I'm not totally familiar with what you're working with, a better connection would be over the network. So USB, it, it's a good connection, but it's two-way communication, it's noisy. And if your DAC had an I squared S input, like ours does, and probably six or seven other types have those I squared S inputs. We, we kind of standardize the use of an HDMI connector to pass I squared S signals. So as a reminder, I squared S is the native format within a DAC and within a CD player, and it has separate lines for data, for clocks, master clock, bit clock, word clock. So you've got separate clock lines and data lines, and that's really nice. So you don't have to multiplex it down into a single stream and then demultiplex it back out into the same format. If you keep it in that format in the first place, it sounds better. So USB is my last choice unless I don't have any other way to get it out. Now, here's another option for you that I think if, if cause I don't think what you have has I squared S and it may not even have a network connection because over the network you have certain advantages of isolation from noise and stuff. There is a device called the Matrix and they're a small cool little company. I think they're Chinese and they make a, a I, I own a couple of them, a beautiful little box that takes USB in and puts I squared S and coax out. And I think you'd be better off using that because it kind of reclocks everything. Definitely sounds better than just straight USB. And whatever you do, do remember that cables matter. So USB cables in particular, there's, I, I prefer AudioQuest, but there's plenty of cables out there that if you experiment around, you'll find one that really suits you and works best. But you'll have people telling you, oh, that's hogwash. Yeah, well. Go wash your hog. It's true. Cables matter on a resolving system. Now, if you change cables and you don't hear it, you probably don't have a resolving system or you're not listening in the right circumstances. But trust me, come here for a tour and ask one of us to swap a cable. We'll do it for you and you can hear the difference. Okay. And I ain't trying to sell you nothing. I don't make cables. I, don't. I think we sell cables. I think we sell AudioQuest cables. But that's not the reason. If that were part of our business that we depended on, we'd be long gone. <laughs> All right. Take it easy. Bye.